Hi, I'm Dominic from Shift MS, the MS Reporter Series. Today we're looking at clinical trials and we're here at the John Radcliffe Hospital in Oxford. I was diagnosed in 1994, I've got relapsing remitting MS, and I've taken part in several trials here. So we're going to go and ask my trial nurse, Anna Cavey, what her views are on patients' concerns for clinical trials. what consent is and why it's so important and what their rights are. So the first question I'm going to answer is how do we approach, how, how are we allowed to approach you about research? Mm -hmm. Because everybody assumes that you're, everybody has a right to research, which you do. We can't go out and approach people. Um, so how it works in Oxford certainly is that we approach you to ask if you'd like to be consented to go on to, it sounds a bit weird, but the name is a tissue bank. That allows us to contact you about upcoming studies. Mm. If you, you can contact us direct and you can say, I've looked on the clinicaltrials.gov website, I can see you're doing this study, can I be involved? Of course, and we can, uh, we can take it that way. But for us to be proactive, um, we have kept a database and that's what it's currently called. So every time we, or to go on to that, we need your consent. So you are consenting that we can approach you. Um, and with that one, there's other things about taking samples and whatever, but the process of consent is you, um, we will give you information about what we're asking you to t take consent about, because often it's different things. Give you time to think about it. You can ask questions and then you sign it, we sign it, and we keep that. With any consent, for, be it about a tissue bank, be it about approaching you for information, or a commercial study, doesn't matter what, you are allowed to withdraw your consent at any time. It's not a commitment forever, it's commitment for as long as you want to be committed to so it. So you can change your mind any time and just walk away? Right, okay. Absolutely. Um, we will ask you why you've decided to withdraw consent mm. so that if we've made a mistake or we've handled something badly, we can build on it. You don't have to answer that question, but it's helpful for us to know why you wish to remove consent. Um, mm. But no, you can walk away whenever. It's side effects. Some of the things that you can read look so alarming and terrifying. Absolutely. And you know, maybe, maybe you could help put them in, in some context because people worry about side effects Personally, I think it's a little bit unregulated to them, but yeah, it's Dr. Google. Absolutely. <laughs> so one of the reasons that we're doing the clinical trial in the first place is that we don't know what the side effects are. So that's why you're closely monitored, why we do your bloods regularly, you come in and see us regularly, you're encouraged to phone us um, if you feel unwell in between visits. So side effects is something that we're, that's the knowledge we're trying to collate as part of the clinical trial. Um, but Side effects are a difficult, um, difficult concept, that's mm. not the right word, but a difficult idea. In the patient information sheet, and when you start a trial, we tell you about every single side effect that we know about that drug, and it will be listed. And there will be um, common and less common ones that can happen to you. Um, but we have to list everything. So if one patient's had something we have to put it on that list so side effects is difficult whatever whether you're doing clinical trials or not because there'll be a huge long list which looks incredibly scary um, we have to acknowledge that they happen and we can't you know we that's why we're collecting the data but it has to be put into con some con uh, context if every patient got every side effect of every drug we'd be in a right old kerfuffle um, but I think it, it's about having we can only tell you what we know about yeah. and if you're worried that's why people who are involved in trials have 24 7 access to somebody on the trials team to, to reassure but to monitor as well so if i get put mm. in a clinical trial will mm. it work well that's a, a very good question so a clinical trial as we've said is a comparison of standard care so you'll always be on the best available care versus a new technique or medication and if anything new comes through whilst you're in the trial, that will always be added in. So a person will never lose out from the standard of care at that time. 
Of course, doing a clinical trial is designed to work out if that medication does or does not work. And until the results of the trial are finished, we cannot know that in general for the people who took part. Of course, with any medication for the individual, it may or may not work in a particular condition. So that's maybe a long-winded answer to say that in a trial, everyone is what's called blinded, so no one knows if they're on the new medication or not the new medication, including the doctors and the nurses. And it's only at the end of the trial, which can be a few years later, can we actually know whether that medication has worked. So a person in trial will never know, in a way, whether it's working or not, but will always be on the best available care. And really it's, I suppose, a number of things, thinking about the trial from the individual's point of view, but also it, the benefit for the community, for the people with MS, because medications that come into trial are very carefully chosen that they should be or could be successful. But until we've done this comparison, we don't know. I've often heard about people getting paid to do clinical trials, and sometimes you see ads, you know, come to London, you know, get paid this silly sum of money, and my experience of being on trials was, was never that. And maybe you yeah. can help me understand the difference. Right, so um, up until relatively recently, we were only uh, under, there's lots and lots of rules and regulations at, or to protect the patient. Law. Hmm? Law? Is law, the law? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. absolutely. So giving consent and being involved in clinical trials, you are protected hugely. We've, we follow something called GCP, Good Clinical Practice. We have not been allowed, we cannot in incentivize you to do a trial and we cannot cause bias so we are not allowed to pay you to participate in a clinical drug trial. So up to now we've been able to give you reasonable travel costs. Um, so please don't arrive by helicopter. We have to negotiate this beforehand but you know, <laughs> we're mean. No, you always pay <laughs> my train fare, it's my recollection. So. Absolutely. So. But there are several, or the, what's becoming more common is that we will um, pay you for the inconvenience. So sometimes on um, some of the trials, you will be given a small amount of money to pay for your inconvenience. That again is set. It will be written in the patient information sheet. You will be told about that beforehand. Right. Um, but basically, no, you don't get paid for doing drug trials. The ones that you've probably heard about of going to London, they'll be um, phase one or studies with healthy controls. Will being on a clinical trial cure my MS? Okay, well that's a, that's a big question. Um, so I think it's very important when a person with MS is going to take part that they look exactly about what the medication does. So as far as we know, unfortunately at this moment in time there's no medication that can cure MS. But it could be a, a trial of a new medication for relapsing or emitting MS against standards of care, does it reduce the number of attacks? Or in progressive multiple sclerosis, can it slow the progression or even stop the progression? But of course, one won't know until the end of the trial. So these are the, the general steps of what we're trying to do in MS. But I think a, a claim that a drug could cure MS, I would treat with, with caution at this moment in time. Unfortunately, of course, we very much hope as the years go on that such an occurrence will occur. We hope you found it interesting. We hope you found it answers some of the questions you have. If it doesn't, please leave anything in the comments and go to shift.ms, like, subscribe, all the usual things. We'd be really, really grateful. Thank you so much for listening.